it's been quite a journey for us to to get to this point. It's been what like 18 years of working for free to get jobs and begging people to kind of let me in. I never thought I'd make it, to be honest. Before I met my wife, my life was a pile of shit. I got one of my first jobs after digging in a bin for food, living in the street at the time, really hungry. And this dude comes out and he's like, what are you doing? Gives me a little bit of the, the rundown. He just tells me to stay there. Next minute he comes out and gives me this like pizza. And that was like probably the best piece of my life. I just started working at the village and I didn't really know anybody and he was the only one that would talk to me because I was also the boss's sister. Pretty little thing comes into the restaurant and typical young guy going, oh, what's this? <laughs> she gave me a second look only because I had this crazy mohawk. <laughs> I was a wild looking dude. I think I'd, I'd known him for about three months before I could actually look him in the eye because his eyes were so intense. After COVID, I decided to leave Foxcroft because I was on a mission to open up my own space. So I ended up going for like a hotel job, chasing money. I think that's what it was. I was just mentally not coping at all. I was burning out. I was one point even suicidal. <laughs> it was just a really, really, really bad space. Literally my best supporter in my life is my wife. She's my rock. She was just like, just leave, we'll, we'll figure it out, you know, money's, money's money, you know, we'll, we'll get there. Then the search for property to start a restaurant, we were like, okay, we're going to do this. Coming back into the industry, I've been out of it for a while. I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself when I started, because I thought, have you lost it? But I don't think I have. I don't think I have. We ummed and odd, but we knew we were going to cook on fire, and my wife is very clever and quirky, and she was like, how about ember and oak? And I was like, that sounds really cool. And then she explained it to me and it's like, you know, obviously ember for fire and oak because we're on a wine farm. People have often said to me about our food is that you can actually, you can taste the love. You can taste the love in the food. Everything has been thought about so carefully and he's so excited about the food and about what he's doing and our children are seeing that. When you look at all the career chefs out there and all the guys who have made it, and um, it's literally all their lives, you know, like that's all they do. That's one of the things I really admire about Frank Dangereau. He would come in and start from the scullery and just go to every single person in the business and 10 minute conversation on how, how are you, how's your kid, did he pass the test or how, you know, like just genuinely cares about his staff and I was like, Oh yeah, there's more to life than just what we're doing right now. And you forget that because you're working 16 to 18 hours a day. I've noticed a difference in doing something that he loves. I fell in love with his passion and he lost it for a while. We are a society that is driven by success or the, what we think is success. To be a really successful person is to just be a good human, to love people, if the people around you love you and value you um, and build you up, you've won that lotto in life. I've come from some serious lows, from abuse and all sorts of things. Sometimes I've got to remind myself that, hold on, I have two beautiful boys who are my everything. <laughs> and um, my life. That's success. <laughs>